you're going to know the Lord's hands on this service. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Amen. Good to have our guests with us. Amen. It's good to have you folks with us. I met you at the dollar store the other evening. Your little girl waved at me and spoke to me. I remember. It's good to have you here. Good to see Corey back with us. And Sister Mary, good to see you here. Good to see Pam and Al with us. And Kesley and Michelle with us. <laughs> Amen. Are you happy to be here? I feel something. I feel something powerful. And uh, we're, we're going to have to we're going to have to work just a little bit on uh, uh, and I, this is not leadership class but we're going to have to work a little bit with our musicians our singers. They're still a little wet behind the ears. But when you feel the Holy Ghost start moving like that you just flow with it. Amen. I felt something the Lord trying to do a little something right then. Amen. And I promise you, I got enough messages to keep. If y'all just want to let the Lord bust out in here, it's all right with me. Matter of fact, I kind of like that every now and again. Don't get used to it. Don't get and fall in love with it. But I kind of like it just to let the Holy Ghost take over. Amen. But we're still here, and He's still here, and I feel His presence. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. I'm going to read that one again. I just like it. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Oh, Lord of mercy. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep. Another word for keep is guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, I love you tonight. I thank you for your presence. I, I thank you for the great spirit that's been, been uh, cultivated here. I'm thankful for the, the wonderful singers and musicians that we have. And, and uh, thankful for Brother David feeling after the Holy Ghost. And I'm thankful, God, to, to be able to just bask in your presence a little bit. But I want to minister to somebody tonight. Or I want to allow you to minister to somebody through me. If you'll use me, Lord, anoint me. Anoint my words. Anoint my lips of clay to deliver this powerfully anointed beautiful word and anoint their ears all of our hear, ears to hear our hearts to understand and we give you praise for it thank you for doing it clap your hands unto the Lord one more time before you see it <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> praise the Lamb of God praise the Lamb of God you may be seated hallelujah the book of Philippians was written to the church in Philippi. I had the good, the good fortune to uh, have a, a meal with the missionary to Greece when I was in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago. And we spoke about Philippi. And it was located in Macedonia, which is in modern day Greece. And the Apostle Paul, who's the author of this book, a lot... Uh, this book, particular book, along with over half of the New Testament, was writing this book as he did many of his from a prison cell. Undoubtedly, his circumstances were dire. Undoubtedly, they, he, he wasn't in a federal uh, country club prison like you've heard about and read about, though they're not all like that either. He wasn't in, uh, in some type of a, a place where they put uh, the Michael Milkins and, and Leona Helmsleys of, of the world, but he was writing from a nasty prison, from a dirty, old, filthy, nasty prison, and his circumstances were not ideal. He wasn't on top of the world. He wasn't feeling like everything was going good. He, he was in a, in a bad situation. But his letter and his other letters are filled with encouragement, Brother David, and they're filled with, with things that people need to hear, and they're, they're filled with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He opens with a passage that encourages them to live the Christian life. 
He then gives examples for living the Christian life. And chapter 3 is filled with exhortations for loving the Christian life. And chapter 4, where we take our scriptural text from, is focused on enablement, enabling you, enabling us or, and, or to make things possible. Things that would make living for God possible. Things that would make living for God feasible. It's something that we could grasp a hold on that it would make it possible to live the Christian life. The first thing he says, and I'm probably not going to keep you long, and if you're a guest here, don't get used to it. Yeah, I'll get over it. But the first thing he says is to keep Jesus at the center of your life. As the oh God, as the sun is the center of the universe and all the planets revolve around it, Jesus is to fill that role for us and be the center of our universe as it is with all of our lives, everything else that's in our life revolving around Him. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I want Jesus to be the center of my life. I want Jesus to be the focus of my life. And we've got to endeavor with all of our energy and effort to do that and keep him there. Secondly, we learn that God abides or lives with believers, bringing peace with Him. He is a God that's with us. Thirdly, is the revelation that God not only supplies and provides our spiritual needs, but He also supplies our natural or our everyday needs. How many of you know that the Lord didn't just, just supply healing, Sister Michelle, but He's also put food on the table. He's also given us some clothes and some shoes. And he's made a way when it didn't seem to be no way. He's brought comfort. To somebody put their arms around you and said, I love you, but it felt like you didn't have a friend in the world. He's got somebody call you on the phone and said, I appreciate you. The Lord is mindful of us. He looks after us. He wants to be the center of our world. He wants our cares on Him. He wants our trials on Him. When your heart's breaking, He wants to hear it. When tears are pouring down your face, He wants to be the one to dry them up. He wants to be everything in each of our lives. In each of our lives. In the beginning of chapter 4, there is a hint of a possible disagreement or a contention that has come up between members of that church. And i got to let you know, conflicts only come from one place. Conflicts arise when one party or the other has got something out of kelter in their life. James 4 and 1 tells us that wars and fightings come from unruly lust, that war in your members, your body, soul, and spirit. The first way to have peace with all men is have peace with the one you live with. That's you. The solution is to keep Jesus as the center of your life. In verse 4 he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Everybody say always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Now keep in mind, Brother David, that Paul is in prison. And there are no good credits. He doesn't get any bonus points, no brownie points. He's not going to get moved up to a trustee or something for, for pretending that everything's all right. As imprisonment becomes a regular part of Paul's life, he has no incentive to lie to these people. He has no incentive to blow smoke at these people. But as imprisonment becomes an, a, a regular part of Paul's life, and, and from the time of his conversion until the time that he dies at Nero's chopping block, uh, he is in and out of prison, in and out of peril. They stoned him. He's left for dead. He was beaten three or four different times. Uh, but got to tell you that just as trials and heartaches became a part of Paul's life, uh, so does rejoicing. So does rejoicing. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed uh, and said, praises unto God. We've got to have a spirit, an attitude where Jesus is the center of our life. Amen. One commentary I read, I believe Brother David has also referenced it in the past. One commentary I read said that to rejoice is to have joy again. Which would involve in Paul's case he ain't got too much to be joyful about where he's at. But it would involve reminiscing about the good things of God. Can I tell somebody tonight that the greatest defense against bitterness, 
and harshness consuming us is to rejoice because rejoicing builds faith and faith is the answer for deliverance. It is impossible to begin to mm, it is impossible to begin to thank God for the things he's done for you. It is impossible for you to begin to lift up the Lord for healing your body or for putting food on your table or giving you encouragement and not feel his presence brother David because when you begin to lift up the Lord. The Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people. It's the defense. Jesus comes and the world's got to go. When we begin to rejoice, get to happy again over the things He's done for us. Verse 5, He refers to moderation. That word moderation is referring to the way we treat other folks. And that word could be better rendered as gentleness. Seeing the Bible said the Lord is at hand. That's referring to the return of the Lord. As the, seeing the return of the Lord is at hand, we must make a concerted effort to be moderate. Hear me now. To be moderate in our criticism. To be moderate in our judgment of others. Because the prevailing thought of our returning Savior Jesus Christ is not that of judgment, damnation, or condemnation. But the Bible says His mercy endureth forever. And if I make it, it will be because of the mercy of God. If you make it, it will be because of the mercy of God. And can I tell you that we've got to show that same mercy to each other. Verse number 6. We are then directed to be careful or to be full of care or better rendered we are directed to worry over nothing. Can I get a witness from all the worriers in the house? But in everything Everything, everything to offer our request in prayer and supplication wrapped up in thanksgiving to God. No matter how small, no matter how big, no matter how, listen to me, no matter how embarrassed you would be if anybody heard you talking to God about that, it still matters to Him. Everything. None too trivial, none too inconsequential, nothing too big or nothing too small. But we are directed to take everything to the Lord in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And the Bible says in verse 7, And the peace of God, the peace of God, that's the peace that only God can give. Peace that consists of complete trust in Him. Peace that the turmoil around us can't touch. The peace that is not contingent upon any area of our life being just so. Things don't have to be just right. Things don't have to be lined up just perfect. But that peace comes from God. He said, my peace I give you not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. But it is a peace. Hear me right now somebody. It is a peace that passes all fleshly understanding. It cannot be attained by human thought or rationale. I don't mean to belittle Dr. Peel's book, Dr. Van Peel's book, but you cannot think yourself into the peace of God. Oh, come on now. Brother Billy, you can't think enough positive thoughts to get the peace that comes from God. You can't read enough chicken soup for the soul books to get the peace that comes from God. It can't be conjured up by simply deciding to have peace. But it is a benefit of having the Spirit of God within us. Can I tell you that it's a benefit of having the Spirit of Christ in us. It is the same peace. You hear me right now. It is the same peace that, that calls Him to be able to take all they can dish out. He took the stripes. He took the spit in His face. He took the ridicule. He took the crown of thorns because of what He had in Him. Not just because he was a good person. But because he was motivated by a higher calling. And his peace wouldn't have been reached. 
He wouldn't have got that peace, Brother David, by being able to get even or to be justified. He didn't get that peace from Peter pulling his sword and cutting off Malchus' servant's ear because he reached down, picked it up, and healed him. He wasn't searching for vindication, but he was motivated by a higher calling. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross. <laughs> I said He endured the cross. I've said this before, but I feel in the Holy Ghost to say it again. There are things you've been praying to get out of. There are things you've been praying for God to deliver you of that are just as important in your life as the cross was in His. I, yeah, I don't think you heard what I just said. Phil, let me reference Brother Arnold again. Sister Michelle, I looked up some notes I have from 2010 when he preached. And he said, stop trying to get out of your problem and let God teach you a lesson. Stop trying to get out of all your messes and stop for a minute and say, maybe this is where I'm headed. Maybe this is a result of what God wants to do in my life. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, looking unto Jesus. Jesus at the center. Jesus at the center of your universe. Look to Jesus, the author of our faith, the one who wrote the book, the one who blazed the trail, the one who showed all of heaven and hell that it could be done, the one that showed that you don't have to sin to be victorious, the one that said, I come and I will leave triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. I've got the keys of eternal life in my hands. I won the battle. Be in the world, you'll have tribulation. I said, in the world, you'll have tribulation but Jesus said be of good cheer I have overcome the world he's a, the one that started this and the Bible said he's the finisher the joy that was set before him was the impetus for his peace the joy that was set before him Never has the necessity of being filled with the Spirit meant more than, than it does now. When turmoil and chaos are the norm, they've always been in the world, Brother David. There's always been turmoil. There's always been conflict. There's always been chaos in the world. But Brother Terry, with all the technology we have, it's now in, in front of your couch every night. Every time you get in your car, Every time you fire up your phone, we are lambasted with all the turmoil, with all the rioting, with all the fussing and cussing and, and all that. You, when you wake up in the morning and yesterday's drama will have already been replaced more than one time by the time the sun comes up. Boy, I don't know what in the world's wrong. But I come to tell somebody, stop looking at your dilemma. Stop looking at your problem. Stop looking and blaming and, and trying to find out who's causing what and look to Jesus. I feel like something's in here wanting us not to get what we need. Boy, I feel like there's a battle going on in this place. The Holy Ghost was moving, and then Brother, Brother Rice there at the very last, I was sitting on the drums. I don't want to cut them drumsticks loose and just have myself a fit, but 
I'm going to tell you something. The devil is a liar. And he wants to make you think that there ain't no hope and there ain't no relief from the mess that you got yourself in. But I'm going to tell you one more time, he's a liar. And whatever he's got, he can deliver you from, he's already done it for somebody else. Oh, come on now. Whatever you're battling with, he's already won that war for somebody else. For we have not a high priest, the Bible says, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted just like us. Amen. Whatever battle you're going through, Jesus Christ went through it on earth. Amen. But He came forth triumphant. And I want you to listen to me right now. When I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't get a good feeling. I didn't get a, a buddy to hang out with. I got power. Right. and authority yeah. right. I, he said behold I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you he said brother Billy and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you There ain't nothing you're going through that a good dose of the Holy Ghost won't fix. Amen. Turmoil and chaos are the norm. People feed on it. People love it. Like junkies that fill their ears full of it. And I come to tell you tonight, look to Jesus. More than one time. Now you hear me right now. More than one time, Brother David, he left everybody behind and went to a mountain place to pray. Oh, God have mercy. Come on, Holy Ghost, lead us. Lead us. More than one time, he separated himself from people. Because everybody got a problem. Everybody's got an issue. Everybody's got something they're dealing with. And this is the answer. Look to Jesus. Look to his example. Answering to a higher calling than that of vindication. The world is consumed with being validated and justified. The world is consumed with being able to find somebody to lay the blame on. And if we're not careful, it creeps into the church. A calling. Jesus answered to a higher calling than that of vindication. He answered to a calling that the lives of every man or woman on the face of the earth was dependent upon. On Jesus answering the bell. Of Jesus carrying the cross up the side of that hill. Of Jesus allowing himself to be hung high and stretched wide. Romans chapter number 8 verses number 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ... He is none of His. The only hope you and I have is the Spirit of God Almighty. Amen. The only hope we have. Brother Billy, once we get filled with that Spirit, we can go down a lot of curvy roads. We can climb a lot of mountains. We can go through a lot of valleys. We can swim a lot of rivers. But we'll never get away from the knowledge that the Lord is on our side. We'll never get away from the knowledge of where our help is. We may get ourselves wrapped up in all kinds of hell and all kinds of turmoil and all kinds of addiction and affliction and all kinds of bad habits and bad friends. But if we'll just find ourselves wiping the slop out of our eyes, dusting off the straw off of us and lifting our head up and see where's Jesus. I don't need Brother Terry. I don't need Brother Billy. I don't need Dr. Phil. I need Jesus. Amen. And if Christ be in you, 
The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. That word quicken means resurrect your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. The title of my message tonight is Look to Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. The only place you're going to find peace. Peace that passes understanding. Peace that is not so that there can be all kinds of things going on around you, but yet you have peace. That, that you may not have enough money in the bank, uh, but you have peace uh, because he's never failed you. You may not have insurance to take your kids to the doctor, but you have peace uh, because he's never failed you. You may be battling with the stress and, and the depression and the emotional ups and downs that come with, with the different choices and decisions we made in this life. I'm going to tell you, whatever kind of shape you're in, whatever kind of fix you're in, wherever you find yourself, the answer is look to Jesus. Turn your back on the world and look to Him. That's repentance. That's a heart and a mind that says, I've had enough. I've had enough of this mess. I've had enough of, of everything buffeting me and everything slamming into me. I've had enough of, of my life being a turmoil. I'm ready for peace. That's only going to be when Jesus is the center of your life. Jesus is the center of your life. The one that gave his life for us on Mount Calvary. The one that shed his blood that we might have healing, that we might have deliverance. I want you to stand with me if you would.